Do you think that we might just be a simulation of something else? I wish I had a good argument against that, and I do not. Just start, start with a real universe and give the life forms in there the belief that they have free will. Then those life forms create a universe within their computer, allowing their life forms to think they have free will. And it's computers all the way down. Now you close your eyes and throw a dart. Which of all of these universes are you most likely to hit? Because only one of them is real, and all the rest are simulations. Just the statistics of that tell us we are probably in a simulation. And further evidence for this is some brilliant alien in his parents' basement is programming us, and anytime tranquility descends upon the Earth, something comes in to ruin the whole thing. And I think they program that in just to keep them entertained. Will we ever be able to teleport? Is this gonna ever be possible? Teleport, so take your body, turn it into energy, beam it over here and reassemble it. Yes. Um, I think a wormhole between those two points will come sooner than teleporting. In our lifetime? And a wormhole is just great. You just step through. You don't have to dematerialize and rematerialize. A wormhole is you're over here and you want to get here during the TV commercial. You bend space, you cut a hole through there, pop out, and there you are, and you got across the galaxy in <laughs> seconds. Any evidence that there are wormholes? This is just a theory. It's a hypothesis. It works on paper. Mm -hmm. We think we can make one, but they're not stable. You worry that if you go in, it might collapse on you, never to be seen again. But I think that'll happen before you can dematerialize, before you can have a transporter. You just don't get it, says Elon Musk. Your response? Let me just say, I've read extensively about the history of big, expensive projects in our species, going from the pyramids to the Great Wall of China. We went to the moon, we felt threatened by the Russians, the godless commies, you know, around the world. And so these are the motivations that enable people to write checks. And at any time, people said, let's do it because it's the natural next thing to do. It just never happens. To think of Mars as Earth 2.0 could only really happen after you terraform Mars. And the point I made, which was not in your clip, was if you have the power of geoengineering to terraform Mars, then you have the power of in geoengineering to fix Earth and turn Earth back into Earth. So climate change will not make Earth uninhabitable. Climate change will make Earth a living hell. In fact, I, I live in New York City where in our harbor we have the Statue of Liberty. And there she is holding the Declaration of Independence. And in her left arm and her right arm is the torch. If you melt the water ice that's on, on land, the ocean level will rise to reach her left elbow. So that takes out all of New York City and basically every other coastal city that we've spent thousands of years building uh, in the, since the dawn of civilization. So life will be very, very different. Hypothetically, if an asteroid did hit, most of the Earth is water. What sort of impact would it really have? So this asteroid, we think it's maybe 50 meters across. So that's, that could take out a small town. Okay. And in a big city, it would destroy a central part of the city. Mm -hmm. There'd be many injuries in the perimeter. If it hits the ground, it would leave a crater nearly a mile across. Wow. So this is serious damage, but most of Earth is water. And most of what is not water is uninhabited. So unlike in Armageddon, where bits and pieces of that asteroid they seem to have GPS aim, that one of them decapitated the Chrysler building. Right. <laughs> it was like, you know, how much of Earth's surface is occupied by the Chrysler building? Right. Right? Right. Or even by Manhattan. If you go to a globe, you can barely find Manhattan. Yet all those asteroids were hitting Same our important in monuments. Cities, yeah. Yeah. Have you really thought about what it would take to fake a moon landing? Because the rocket did launch. We all saw the rocket launch, okay? So there's hardware there. They're, they're like office buildings of blueprints for the design of the Saturn V rocket. The hundreds of, of engineering hours that went behind this and the records of those designs. If you wanted to fake the moon landing, you would have to fake all of these documents. And it just seems to me, it's way easier to just go to the moon. Has anyone considered that? <laughs> Just go to the moon. That's 
easier than faking all of this. So, uh, no, but yeah, we went to the moon. Y'all believe in quantum mechanics or theory of relativity? Which one is better? You don't have that choice. They each exist and work and make predictions that are verified. They're both kind of crazy, but they apply to reality. Now, it turns out we already know the limits of relativity. It can't describe the center of a black hole. So we know relativity will have to be extended or modified in those extremes to understand that. Quantum physics, quantum mechanics, it works every single place we have ever applied it. Every single place. So in that regard, it is the most successful theory of the universe that has ever been put forth. It could be possible that in the future, quantum physics will subsume relativity entirely to get you to those singularities, the center of the black hole and the beginning of the universe. But right now they both work and we're completely happy with them. You may remember, or you may have heard, that Einstein's relativity, where the faster you move, right, the slower time, time. ticks for you, as others view it. Relative okay? to the observer. Relative to the observer, correct. You don't know anything's happening. Right. Your clock still ticks as far, you still got your, your heartbeat, all of this, okay? So this is not a physiological thing. It is an actual property of the fabric of space and time under those conditions. Wow. Okay? That all is right. fascinating. It is, it's completely fascinating, it's completely. So I watch you fly by, and the faster you go, the slower time ticks for you, okay? But my time stays the same. To you. To me. Right. To you. So not only does speed do this, also the strength of a gravitational field will have the same effect on you. Oh. The stronger the gravitational field is, the slower time ticks for you. If you cut any hole between any two points on Earth, it's a 90 minute trip. Whoa, uh oh, wait a minute. I'm now confused because first we were going the diameter yes. of the Earth. Yes. Okay, and that's from point to point on opposite sides. Opposite sides. But if we go up this circle and then I cut a hole. Yeah, you're not going through the center. I'm just going straight across. Straight across. But it's a much shorter distance. Yes, it is. So why wouldn't it, why would it take the same amount of time? Because you're is you're there, not falling towards the center of the Earth. So the gravitational difference? It's a, yes, it's the force the force accelerating you is less. Get out! And it's less by exactly the right amount to cancel how much shorter the distance is. Come on, you stop it right now. Get out of here! Gravitational physics. Well, that is amazing. Yeah. You explain to me the fabric of space time might be woven by wormholes that connect the virtual particle pairs that come in and out of existence. And that if they're connected by wormholes, rather than just some field, then the wormhole is an actual structural texture of the universe. Yeah, in fact, the other all way- right, now we, I, I'm sorry, uh, what, what? first of all, I need some weed to even deal with this. Because if I'm I'm trying to figure out what you just said. Here. The vacuum of space right. is not a vacuum. Right. Because quantum physics requires what? There's all sorts of uncertainty, and that uncertainty means that there's fluctuations, and therefore there are particle antiparticle pairs, there's energy fluctuations, there's field fluctuations. Right. It's a roiling mess out, out there, there in energy space. And so there's no yeah. nothing. Yeah. There is no such thing as nothing. That violates uncertainty that, that violates if there's truly nothing. Parallel universes, do they exist? All our current understanding of how this universe got here tells us there are plenty of other universes, and that's the multiverse idea. And parallel universe sounds a little more cool than just other universes in a multiverse, but sure, and there's likely an infinite number of them. Hence the possibility that I'm interviewing you on my show from London, and you're here in the, <laughs> you know, all combinations of all atoms and molecules and thoughts and neurosynaptic firings would exist in the infinite universes that are out there. The most astounding fact is the knowledge that the atoms that comprise life on Earth, the atoms that make up the human body, are traceable to the crucibles 
that cooked light elements into heavy elements in their core under extreme temperatures and pressures. These stars, the high mass ones among them, went unstable in their later years. They collapsed and then exploded, scattering their enriched guts across the galaxy. Guts made of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and all the fundamental ingredients of life itself. These ingredients become part of gas clouds that condense, collapse, form the next generation of solar systems, stars with orbiting planets. And those planets now have the ingredients for life itself. So that when I look up at the night sky, and I know that, yes, we are part of this universe, but perhaps more important is that the universe is in us. When I reflect on that fact, I look up. Many people feel small because they're small and the universe is big, but I feel big because my atoms came from those stars. Personally, I'm not all that worried about artificial intelligence and robots taking over the world. But almost everyone I know who's an expert in it, they're worried. But here's my reasoning for why I'm not as afraid as AI experts. Every manifestation of computer ability that has arisen has been parsed into some task or set of tasks that we previously had undertaken and now the computer does it. So the idea that you would have what they call general intelligence, some kind of entity that can learn anything and do anything and do it better than any of us, I just don't see that as the direction things are headed. We'll have tasks, we'll get some really good computer to figure out how to do it better than we can, and then we, it happens. So I'm, I'm not as worried, but if the concerns of AI experts are real and we, we need to heed them, yeah, there'll be a day when AI takes over and it'll make us their pets.